Hi! I don't know if anyone's out there if you are. Come and say hello. Um, I decided to jump on today and talk to you about the importance of playing big for women writers. Um, I talked last week about my mission, how I'm going to hopefully get more women writing and their books out there changing the world and really kicking ass. And I talked about why I'm doing this because there's been a proven gender bias in the industry where women aren't getting published as much as men, they're not winning awards, they're not getting reviewed and on and on and on. So that's part of the puzzle I want to help support women with. But the other part is actually where we women ourselves can actually have a bit of agency. So I would, I'm going to talk to you today about playing big, how important that part of it is for women to become successful as authors. Now, Playing Big is the title of an amazing book by Tara Moore, and I'm going to talk a bit about today how she goes through the main things, the five things that basically she thinks women get get caught up on. Um, I'm also very influenced by the lovely Jo Casey, who is my coach, who talks a lot about feminine conditioning. Hi there! Is that Banner? Hi! Thanks for joining me! Um, so I'm just going to go through those things today. But uh, I'm also going to explain that I have a little bit of nervous energy today because I'm on this very incredible position of waiting for a call from a Hollywood producer um, who may or may not be interested in optioning my book because he loves my novel, Welcome to Sharonville. Um, or we might just, you know, collaborate over something else. Um, so I'm not on here to brag, I'm a bit nervous, but I, I wanted to point this out because this is how playing big pays off. Uh, it took a long time for me to get published, about 10 years of rewriting and writing and facing rejections, and this will never be your breakup book, and blah, blah, blah. And yeah, it's out there, and, and complete strangers like it. And people who play... It, big leagues, Hollywood leagues, with people like Idris Elba. So I'm, whatever happens today, whether he calls or not, it's a bit like waiting for a date. I am happy and hi, Banner. I am happy and I am proud. And I wanted to say this to you because you need to be out there sharing your work if you if you want opportunities to come your way and mir miracles to happen. So I'm going to talk a little bit today about how we sometimes stop these things happening and we, we don't really believe in ourselves. And the number one tar thing number Tara Moore talks about is self-doubt. Now, I think we're all crippled. Hi, Liz! We're crippled by self-doubt. You know, women are supposed to be perfect. We're supposed to look perfect. We're supposed to sound perfect. We're supposed to be perfect partners, perfect wives. Um, you know, being single, wow, no, not a good thing. You know, all these all these cultural pressures are there on us. Um, so I think it's no wonder why women don't feel comfortable being able to put their thoughts and their ideas and their opinions on, it, and, on paper and use their talents and then go out in the world and say they're worth sharing with people like agents and editors. Um, and then promote them and sell them and say, look, this book needs reading, this film needs seeing. Um, so self-doubt is a major, major... Hi, Jan! Lovely to see you all on here. Yeah, so self-doubt is a major, major thing we need to deal with. And I think it's just a case of being really gentle with ourselves and really aware of where it affects us. Um, and so, I, you know, I'd invite you to just be conscious of that. That, And you will get self-doubt every time you hit, a, you know, a new comfort zone. So I, I have a client who... Hey! Who got... I love the hearts, um, who got an agent after two sessions with me, which was amazing and I'm so proud of her. But then of course that brings up doubts because it's that then you're up to a new level. So every new level you reach as a writer will bring up fears and, and self-doubt. So it's kind of normal, but at the same time I want you to realise how cultural it is for women to be told, you know, we're not good enough and all those sorts of things. And, and women in the public eye are vilified. You only have to look at the really successful women, they're called bitches or this and that, and they, you know, their body to criticize whatever so this you know understand that we're in it's because of culture that we have this self-doubt but basically just down with it down with it we don't need it anymore you know it's just keeping us playing small and keeping us from the success we deserve so that's the number one thing Tara Moore talks about the next thing which is related to this which she talks about is the inner critic I mean anybody out there have a big inner critic I know I do my inner critic is, you know, loves to say, oh, you know, this line's rubbish, you look rubbish today, whatever it is. And it's a very, very powerful tool for keeping us playing small. 
And that again, I think is cultural because we're taking in all these voices in our society that tell us we're not enough all the time. We just can't win, you know? We live in a society where we're supposed to be perfect. How can we be? So all this junk is in our head telling us we can't. Now, Tara Moore has a very brilliant thing where she says we should refer to the inner mentor, um, which she describes as kind of like an older, wiser version of ourselves who's been, been there, done all that, and has loads of wisdom and insight to share. And she actually has like a guided meditation on her website, Tara Moore, if you want to look into that inner mentor thing. Or you could just write yourself a letter from an older self asking them about the problems you're facing now and seeing what light they can shed on it. I think that's really, really important to remember that we have this part of us that wants to protect us and love us as well as this part of us that is quite critical. Um, I also think, <laughs> thanks for the red. <laughs> yeah, good red. I love red for a pale girl like me. Um, but yeah, so this whole thing about, so look up, nurturing yourself, you know, understanding that when the inner critic turns up, we don't have to believe it, you know, it tells all these stories. I'm a Martha Beck coach, and so is Banner, who's on the call, and we train together. And so we do stuff in the Martha Beck world about turtle steps, and I, and also about the lizard. And I think it's very important we have this part of our brain called the, we call the lizard, which is related to reptilian brain. And it just sees lack and attack everywhere, and I think that's related to what, what she calls the inner critic. I think I think of it as the lizard. So it's just remembering that the, this lizard is trying, that the inner critic is trying to protect you, but often it's saying things that aren't very very useful you know it's just coming up with all these fears that might happen um so yeah you can even label it martha has us label our, our lizards we go oh look you know and then julia cameron the author of the artist way it calls her as nigel and she says nothing's ever good enough for nigel right so it's also naming it and being aware like it is with the self-doubt okay so that's that's the second thing the other thing she really helpfully looks at is fear and she she has a Jewish background so she looked at the Hebrew meanings of fear in the Bible which is fascinating there's like basically pashad which is the kind of fear we normally experience when we anticipate the future and it's all doom and gloom and you know we kind of catastrophic fantasy about the world and our writing and how no one's ever gonna love it I used to see my book going through you know a shredder so that's you know and then yeah so anyway so that kind of stuff that keeps us back but then she's also makes us aware of this other kind of fear which is called yira which i love the sound of which is basically about that excitement you get the kind of scared sighted we call it in the martha beck world where you're kind of half scared half excited because you're moving up to a new level or you're you're, you're taking up more space than you normally would so that also comes, you know, when you finish a book or how dare I write a book, you know, and you've stepped into that, owned your voice and you're writing or you're getting an agent or you're getting a publisher or crazy Hollywood, people are ringing you. It's it's like, how, whoa, how can I do that? But that's a more positive fear than Pashad and that's something she says we can lean into and we should lean into. So I'd encourage you to do that, you know, um, to try and notice what kind of fear do I have here? Is it really, hi there? Don't know who that was joining. Um, thank you for the love hearts. But who, you know, which kind of fear is it here? Is it the dreaded Pashad I need to really think about? You know, is that true? Is it really, you know, we use the work by Byron Katie a lot in the Martha Beck world and I coach my clients with it a lot too. Hey darling, how you doing? Um, so, uh, you know, is it true? I mean, that's the thing, it's a simple question. We use four questions in the work, but you could just ask yourself, is it true? If Pashad's saying, you'll never get published. Pashad's saying, you know, oh, what's the point of writing this book? Pashad's saying is, I'll upset too many people if I write this book, people won't like me anymore. Then qu you can question this stuff and step into your talent and your gifts, because that's what I really want you to do. And if you feel you're out, like you're, you're going forward and it's something really, oh, thank you, darling. You always look gorgeous too. It's lovely to have you on the call. It's that whole thing about, you know, year out, I, I am becoming bigger. I am becoming more successful and it scares me, but that's okay. Just welcome it. That's an energy that is really positive and exciting. So go, year out, it's coming, right? So begin to notice the different types of fear. And I think that the Tom was really useful in that respect as well, in terms of, you know, dealing with it in a healthy way and just being observant. Then the other thing as well, which I think is a massive thing, is she talks about unhooking yourself from approval, the need for approval, praise and blame. And in in the Buddhist world, I know the Buddhist said, you know, the winds of praise and blame will just knock you about sideways. They just drive you insane. So you have to be really careful 
And I often tell my writers to basically try and emotionally separate the writing process, which is joyous and, and something people have passion about, from the publishing world, which is we don't have any control over, right? We we have no control. I have no control whether this guy calls me a day or not. I have no control whether he likes me or whatever. But this is it. I've done my work. I've I've made my book as well as, I can, as good as I can. And that's it. So... It's also thinking, well, you know, if you believe the bad reviews, you have to believe the good reviews. And it, and it can just drive you crazy because everybody gets bad reviews as a writer. Um, even as human beings, not everybody's going to like us. Not everyone's going to get us. You know, it's just life. We're not going to be friends with everybody. Um, and I think for women as well, we're hooked on being people pleasers. You know, we have to make everybody happy. We have to be kind to everyone. We have to be nice. And I think this isn't great because sometimes it means we don't tell our truth on the page. Yeah, exactly. It's freedom, isn't it? When you cut, you release yourself, you let your go from what you can't control. Do what you can. Make your book as best you can, and someone will want to read it probably. Okay, um, but yeah, don't terrify yourself about everyone has to approve. I mean, you, you can even write under a pseudonym if you're writing something risque and you think my friends and family won't approve. People rarely, to be honest, see themselves in work. They just don't. <laughs> We're all so blind to our own foibles. So don't worry about that. But yeah, unhook yourself from this need to please everybody and be perfect and be light because it's just not going to happen. And that often means challenging people's expectations. So you are going to have to go out there and go, bam, you know, this is me. So, you know, don't worry about being a good girl anymore. Um, do what make what you think is right and then just go out there in the world and don't worry if it ruffles a few feathers you know the poor people who love you will understand your work and will get you and you'll find all the others you'll find a tribe too so that's another thing I really encourage you to do is unhook from approval um, and the last thing that Tara Moore talks about is being a good student now this is really interesting because I've got a PhD and a lot of writers I know are quite educated we're like almost uber super educated and I sometimes that's wonderful and it does help me help us you know obviously I love education but there is a thing and I agree with Tara that you get this thing if you, oh I must be a good student I must get the A and this often involves squashing our creativity squashing our innovation to fit a system I I knew I, I knew from very early on in my academic career that, that it was a game I had to use certain language I had to use a certain form of argument to get an A right and it was fine and I think also as well there's a partial game as well in terms of getting published because you have to approach gatekeepers with the right query letter your opening chapters have to be right your synopsis has to be right and there's a game and I teach my clients to play it so there is a bit of a game involved in everything in life I guess but I think there's the way we want to be creative as writers we have to throw that out the window right I'm not saying throw art out the window the, the kind of craft things because I, I really wish all my writers would learn about narrative and, and plotting and all the important things because it would save them time in editing and, and heart, heartache when I come along and tell them to reshape it. But I do believe this being a good student is being a good girl. I think that is that is important to jettison out the window because the, the real the real trendsetters in in art break the rules that it was called the avant-garde you know, the front wave the pioneers so if you really want to be a pioneer in anything whether it's entrepreneur or blogger or an authoress or healer you're probably gonna if you're gonna become a thought leader you're gonna need to go out there on that edge and lead the way um, and not follow which is about you know a lot of knowledge in university settings it's all about how much knowledge comes in and we have to start becoming knowledge out we have to realize our knowledge is good and we're going to give it to the world now we just we're not just receiving it so I really hope there and there's uh, helped you today to think about how you might play big because this is so important for writers you have to start realizing your ideas are good enough to be on paper they're good enough to be published they're good enough to be books and they're good enough to be out there changing the world and that that's my mission and i i want to do more and more of that as a feminist book coach for, for women with big things to say and i'm going to be you know putting my new feminist programs and web revamp website up in the next in few weeks hopefully um and announcing a scholarship as well so people can come and work with me so if anybody has any questions I can take them now if anyone's got any questions about anything I've said all right 
Yeah, be yourself, Banner, absolutely. I mean, I think learning itself is great, but then you have to kind of go past your masters and you have to create to create your own originality. Otherwise, we're just regurgitating everything that's gone before. Hi, Lauren. How are you? So, yes, Lauren's a good, good, good example of playing big. She's a great business owner. And I just, you know, by talking about, you know, talking about what I do as a coaching the other day, we may, we may collaborate. So this is the thing. We have to be out there telling our stories in the world, not just sharing our work with agents and editors and going out there, you know, submitting to competitions and journals. We need to be talking to people about what we do online and in person. And that, that's part of playing big for me, you know. That, you know, if I hadn't had the book in the world, if I hadn't been on LinkedIn, this producer wouldn't have come and found me. So it's just like you have to be out there, even if you get these fears, even if you get this self-doubt. And it's like, who am I to be out there doing this stuff? Right. So even if you have that, you have to just not listen to it. It's like you don't have to believe that story anymore. You, you know, you, we all get it. We all get self-doubt and we all worry about whether we're good enough. You know, I think that's the number one belief I, I coach with my clients. Deep down, we all have a thing. I'm not good enough, you know. For whatever reason, it seems to be a kind of, kind of universal thing. But you don't have to listen to it, you know. You don't have... That story is just a story. And a lot of my writers are brilliant, you know, at, at creating narratives, creating these great stories. And it's wonderful on the page, but it can destroy their their lives and their careers if they start believing the terrible ones. I like, oh, it's never going to happen for me. It's never, you know, I'm never going to be successful. I'm never going to be able to do this. So, yeah, so that's the thing. You've got to free, free yourself from those sorts of things. Any more questions before I pop offline? It's just so lovely to see you all. Any more questions about anything about self-doubt or how you handle fear or anything else? No? Oh, just a story. We write your story. Yeah, it's absolutely right. I mean, yes, yes, you can rewrite your story. We are in charge of our story. We often feel like everything's fated and it's just like, oh, we've been given this and it's like, this is the way it is. No, I cry bullshit on that. You know, it's not the way it is. You can create your story and creativity. It doesn't just apply to on the page. It creates creativity applies to your life. You know, recreate your life. Don't play with the rules everyone else plays by just because everybody else does them. Right. So that that's the thing as well. It's like if you know something, it makes you happy. If something gives you joy, go for it. Follow it. Martha Bexor is telling us that's the kind of track to follow. You know, don't you don't have to follow the same story everyone else does. And you don't have to follow the same path creatively, you know, either. Right, yeah, self-limited beliefs. Right, okay. Well, that's a big thing. And uh, my lovely coach on here, see Renny Washington, she's like my coach friend. She dealt with something on limiting beliefs yesterday. You won't want to watch one of her lives. But it's a big thing we deal with as a coach, right? So I often use the work by Myron Katie and I go through the four questions and come up with such... Um, you know, come up, come up with the main thing that's bugging someone and then I kind of get them to just sort of question it. Is that true? And we look through it and often people go really quiet because their brain is making a new connection. You know, the, usually our brains are very quick at making bad connections because they've gone there and they've gone there and they've gone there and they literally, this thing called myelination occurs which makes it like a far, super highway. And when we create a new connection, like actually I am good at this, I often see people go quiet because they're struggling to make that connection. It's like a kind of dirt road versus a highway. So yeah, using those questions, just just doubting it, just questioning it, you know, questioning your thinking. Be aware when you have a limiting belief. It usually makes you feel miserable and really tight in your body. So I often ask people, you know, to look out for that. When you think times you feel yucky, then you are probably in a limiting belief or a bad story. I don't know if that helps, Liz. Yeah. Or well, what did you? Yeah. But how, how can we, Banner says, how come can we brilliant and doubting ourselves so much at the same time? Wow. Yes, that is so true. We're such complex beings, aren't we? Yeah. And I, yeah, I find that hard. I think sometimes it's like it's an internal tussle and it can tear us apart if we're not careful. Um, I think, you know, swinging to either side is kind of dangerous. But I think if we have beliefs that are helping us, that, that make us feel confident, make us feel safe, make us feel secure, then we, we should lean into them, you know? And I do believe all of us are brilliant in a way. All of us have great talents. So that, so I think that brilliant part of us is true. 
you know? I'm not saying become massively, you know, narcissistic like Donald Trump or something. Uh, that's unhealthy and he doesn't really believe, he doesn't really believe in himself. I think there's a horrible emptiness and messed up man in there, right? Real self-belief doesn't hurt others. People who have real self-belief help others and support others and their light shines brightly. Um, and it doesn't hurt, it doesn't involve putting other people down to get to that point. So I think, I don't know if that helps. Does that help, Anna? You know, like seeing the good side and the bad side um i think a lot of artists are we are quite torn you know and creatives and, and good and big thinkers you know um we are quite torn but yeah l listen to the wise part of you the part of you that loves you the part of you that's compassionate to you that's that's the key thing because art isn't easy and you need to feel safe to make it i often say that the inner writer is like a little child and if you shout them play they won't play so you have to you know really engage lightly with them and believe in believe in them and then they, yeah and then you'll be creative what are you saying good start i love to yeah yeah it's a lifetime's work you know liz working on your internal beliefs you know i can easily sit here and say down with self-doubt and don't listen to the inner critic but that it's not simple it's not a simple journey it's a life's journey it took us our whole lives to start believing these terrible stories and it might take a whole one lives to unpick them but there's no better time to start that than today, you know. Um, so we start we start now and we start gently and we just become aware. We can even laugh at ourselves. Oh, oh there's the lizard again. My lizard's, you know, Lizard, she's called. She's very hard. And, and oh, there's Lizard again. And she's trying to protect me by telling me, oh, not, you know, nothing good will ever happen or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, wow, yeah, Judah Cameron's a big influence on me, actually, Banner, and her work's fantastic. I um, I teach a lot of work. I did a workshop with her. She was amazing. She's very funny. Um, but, um, yeah, you know, we, we can be made for small by our families, yeah. A lot of, if you think about it, when we're ki all kids are creative, aren't we? We're all born creative. We tell stories. We make art. And then we're told, oh, well, you won't make any money at that, you know, just forget about it, which is absolute lies, really, because creativity is behind every innovation. You know, you wouldn't have an Apple iPhone, right, without creativity. Creativity is behind business, it's behind science, it's behind medicine, as well as the obvious arts. So, yeah, absolutely, we have to hold on to it. But it, it means, you know, often going against a lot of cultural messages, especially for women, you know. What are you going to say? Sorry, what did you say there? Limiting beliefs is protection we don't need. Yeah, absolutely. Stepping back and observe and question. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, but I don't need you today. Exactly. So it's about saying to that lizard who's telling you this stuff, well, yeah, I know you're trying to protect me, but this might be an old story relating to an old situation which isn't happening now, you know? It's not happening now. I remember uh, years ago, I was in a therapeutic workshop and it, it was basically, this woman's just said, Sharon, it's the war's over. It's time to put down the sword yeah so how many times do we go into thinking we're in battle we need to fight a situation when necessarily well it's that's over you know we don't need to go in so defensive or so harsh against ourselves or so armored that we can't feel our feelings i mean that's one that's one thing i've noticed with the situation with the producer is i'm thinking oh i'm going to be disappointed because you know i'm in, I'm mid, I'm in mid, mid, <laughs> mid life i've had a lot of experiences that haven't been great a lot of disappointments but we need hope. So it's so important to hold on to our hope and know that if disappointment comes, it comes and we'll survive and we'll go on, you know, and just to take the good from whatever situation we're in. So whatever happened, a guy from Hollywood thought my book was great. So that's the end of it, even if you never, if you never hear from him again. So I think it's that as well, isn't it? Being able to op unarmor ourselves and hope you know because that's what this voice does as well self-doubt it, it kind of kills off the hope it kills off the desire we try and tell ourselves we don't want things we do and and then that then how can we go forward how can we play big with that situation going on okay guys unless anybody's got anything else to say i will pop off now and uh, wish you all a very good afternoon uh, it's been lovely being on and uh, having some of you here to talk to as well, which is really nice, really special. I really hope that's helped you think about how you're going to play big in your creative world or life or just life in business and life in general. And I'm going to pop the article I wrote about this if you want more information about it um, below um, after I finish. So you can have a read of that at your leisure. Anyway, take care. Have a good week. Bye.